Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Cracking. It's D-Boss here. This has been by Omezius to have the most disturbing family content on TikTok. Oh, I've seen this family. When I was on TikTok, they were just forced upon me. They live in a one-bedroom apartment or something like that. It's like 10 of them. <laughs> it's something crazy. Um, and I feel like a lot of people are talking about them at the moment. Um, so, yeah, let's hear what he has to say about them. Let's watch. Before on this channel, we talked about the detriments of family content, and I thought I found the oh. worst of it all. But this week, I came across something that is total bull. As you can read in the caption above, we're a family people. of six going on seven, living in oh, a one bedroom apartment. As the kids grow older, that means we constantly have to adapt our environment to give them That's more. And y'all got pets? Yeah, an extra space. But outside our environment appears cluttered, disorganized, wow. what have you. But quite frankly, Multiple after making pets. do for nearly three years now, I have nothing but a grateful spirit for the roof over our head. And only the instant judgment me and my husband receive. That's Why nice. have so many kids if you don't have enough space for them? See, my perception is judgment comes from a place of not having the experience. When you've experienced enough, you generally don't judge people. I can tell you after everything I've been through in the past three Year. There's very little I have to judge people. I would be lying if I said there wasn't a point in my life that I was so naive. And like I said, I have learned a lot. I generally look like I'm roughing it, but that's because our kids come first. I do everything I can to keep our environment clean and tidy. When it comes down to it, I could shove everything my kids have in one bedroom yeah, or someone's so house sleep with each other? and it would really look like nothing. We try you gotta think about these things because she's having kids like left and right, so they must be fucking like rabbits. So y'all fucking with the kids in the same room? That sounds inappropriate and CPS worthy. Try to teach our kids to take care of what All they have. Be grateful worthy, for what honestly. we have. We keep praying and pushing for the growth that we want. Appreciate y'all watching. See you in the next video. I didn't just feel like that one goofy movie meme where Max enters the house and is like, damn, did you live like this? Because damn, you live like this? Now, before we get started in the video, I want to be clear. This is not an indictment on them and their financial situations. People are actually poor in America. They so live stop having the kids. Line and they have to make do with what they have. With that being said, some of these people's actions, their logic, their reasoning, and their justification as to continue the bullshit that they have going on is something that has to be talked about. This is the Resilient Jenkins family, a family that doesn't deserve any bit of praise or recognition at all, but hey, we're going to cover them on this channel. Their family of six going on seven, the mother is pregnant with baby number five in this situation here and they live in a one bedroom apartment and again, this is an indictment on the financial status of these people. It's their decision making and their choices. When I grew up, Why my mom told me the stories about how she and her siblings grew up in an apartment of one. She also has about four to five other siblings at this time. But the difference is her parents stayed in the living room and the kids got the bedroom with a bunch of different bunk beds. That's not the case in this situation. Both of them had kids outside of the relationship. They came together and started having more kids. The parents get to sleep in the room. The kids sleep out in the living room. The parents' room has a whole TV, a PS5, and a regular bed, and the kids have foam mattresses on the kitchen floor that they have to share with cats and like that. The dad does a bunch of gig work and spends a bunch of time outside of the house. And that's gonna come up later as to why that's important because it's just gonna tell the tale of how much of a deadbeat he really is. And the mother is a stay-at-home mom for a bunch of poor excuses, but we'll get into those Stay as well. At home. Now they're both recovering home. addicts work, who met girl. in some sort of rehabilitation center, but none of that's stopping them from continuing to do drugs today. Like while she has the baby, she is still actively taking drugs by oh. her social media accounts. And two, there's nothing stop he has the baby. She is still actively taking drugs. When I'm trying to be good herself. at microdose. Oh. Media accounts. And two, there's nothing stopping her from doing any no. sort of work that would most definitely contribute to the house in a meaningful way. But instead, she spends her time, like all these family influencers do, begging people online in order to pay mm -hmm. for their lifestyle and make her some sort of mommy influencer. And I'm not a fan of this type of content at all, but the reality Begging of it is, is that it exists. But the main thing about this family content is before anything, you have to take care of your actual family. <laughs> Yeah, she asked for money directly. And if you're making entertaining and engaging content consistently, for sure, most people are going to make you some sort of influencer. But it's not something that you beg your way to being. <clears throat> Maybe in 2024, it's different. But this woman is so against the idea of working that even if it comes at the risk of harming her kids in the household, she is willing to not do it in the search and hopes for social media clout and fame. I'll be fine. I'm completely and utterly fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, fine. I'm, fine. I'm, fine. I'm always fine. Don't you know that? Sure. 
remember what I said here. The cat has a skin infection, and the cat is sleeping with these young babies that are susceptible to being Whoa. sick and have a weaker immune system than a dog. All this could be mitigated if they just decided to change their lifestyles up by having the parents be out in the living room. Or hell, give away the cat. But no, the parents live a life of luxury. I, I know that's strange to say in this regards, but they're in their room comfortable with a television and a bed and a PlayStation 5. <laughs> Dad takes his first evening off in 150 days, so him and the kids have a gaming sesh. Shush. Girl, that's not... The kids do have a PS4. They just like watching Dad Space play. back when they just had a small amount of kids, but now they continue to keep growing, keep smashing, and keep making this some sort of game on TikTok by saying, hey, if you make me an influencer, I'll give my hubby another kid. It's actually disgusting oh work. God. But the problem is they can't control the outbreaks that are happening in their own damn home. They have months of lice and fleas to the point where it was uncontrollable. And prolonged lice and flea outbreaks in homes can be detrimental to the long-term health of kids. We're talking about the psychological. We're we're talking about diseases. We're talking about infections being passed along. This isn't the New York City streets. This is a damn home. It's supposed to be somebody's comfort, somebody's protection. You can't even get it under control. At least alleviate some of the problems by putting your kids in the damn room and you sleep out there with the cats since you decide that right. you need to have them. Okay. You listen here, you walking pile of panic attack. You're gonna inhale, exhale your way through this bullshit. It says, RIP to my hair. This is the damage done after having a treat for lice. Ha having a treat for lice four months on end. That comb is terrible on your hair. If it's the She's last good. thing you do, your thoughts aren't real, your mind hates you, but your- The reason why I hate this family content is because it's putting to the side the safety, health, and well-being of the kids in order yeah. to make some sort of influence out of the money. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know how this drug addict, deadbeat father, etc., etc., is supposed to make good content, but that's the hope and prayer for them by mom sitting on live, begging for people to follow her, begging for people to basically build their lifestyle all day and all night. This begging is so blatant, <laughs> girl. You don't even provide entertainment or nothing. My thing is, if you want to ask for money, like at least provide something. There, this should be an even exchange, like some type of entertainment to some degree. Like you just standing there looking stupid. <laughs> Like, you're not giving nothing in return. If people want to give you money or help out, at least entertain them. It's the very least you could do. I'm not even being entertaining. Do a TikTok dance or something, girl. Jeez. CBS should step in because this is a person CBS who does is. not take the health and well-being of her kids and her family very seriously. When she does decide to get pregnant, I think she should stop having babies with a hole. She doesn't Absolutely. even listen to the doctors recommend that she doesn't do certain things to avoid complications with the pregnancy. I have no idea how far along pregnant. Far enough along that the nausea is at its peak, though. So that makes me think I'm about seven, eight weeks-ish. So this will be my sixth time being pregnant. I've had two miscarriages three babies and this is number six so we're gonna find out we're praying for the best of course we're believing for the best regardless i find it goofy that when you're into your like third fourth time in a row you really should not be getting so many questions by the doctors or like you know we highly recommend you don't mess with the cat box can you recommend to my cats they don't shit then <laughs> that would be great stay away from too many herbal teas i'm gonna drink my teas thank you i'm not a doctor at all but i think that maybe there's some sort of connection to the habits that you have you know the continued drug use the kitty litter use you know the disgusting conditions that you have in your household could probably be linking to some of these miscarriages or complications that you're having with your pregnancy. I don't know. I I don't know. I, I may be jumping out the window with that one. I don't know. Now, the internet is trying to decide whose fault this really is in the grand matter of things, but ultimately, I'm here to squash all conversations. It is both parents' faults. And then there's a third party involved that people aren't necessarily thinking about that could be at fault here. And I'm here to say, yes, you, the people that are consuming this content, engaging and ultimately yeah, donating, are involved and being complicit in enabling the behavior that they are displaying on the internet. I saw just the other day that somebody sent the kids some bunk beds. Kudos to them, but damn, do do not give them an out. Do not give them some sort of way to get out of working hard and providing for their kids. And it wouldn't even be hard work. Woman, just get a job.
So I decided to look up everything in regards to the whole the resilient um, Jenkins family in Oregon and Portland and their standards of stuff of care and everything we're supposed to. Off the bat, each mm. child is supposed to have their own bed and own mattress that is adequate for their size. That's just the standard. That's just what they they want. And when it comes to housing, usually it's supposed to be two per room. So in their case, you can, if the child, the youngest child is like three, you have to include them. But if not, because they can kind of sleep with their parents, it's supposed to be two per room. There's three kids. One of the children is not related to the other children, which I think that comes into bed sharing. So there would need to have at least two rooms for the kids, essentially. But being that they're going to add more children in, they're going to grow up, they're going to need at least a three bedroom, 100%. Like there's no way around that. And also there's a way for the parents to have a room as well, because that is obviously extremely important to the parent to have their privacy, but it's not. But anyway, each child must have their own bed. They cannot bed share with someone that they are not related to. So no, the rolled up phone mattresses that come into play and come out of play during the day is not up to standard. I don't know if the apartment complex could get in trouble for this or the parents could get in trouble for it, but it is in violation. Also, I looked up if there is a program, cause here in North Carolina, there is one in certain counties where people will donate a bed to you with bed framing and I think a mattress as well for a child, free to the parent, no cost to any, you know, anything. They do that in Oregon. I did look it up. They do that in Portland specifically. I looked that up as well. So for the fathers to say that they don't have beds because they broke them, I can see where people are saying the financial literacy is not there. The irresponsibility is, is there because as a parent, I'm a parent of three boys. They have broke their beds several times. I have replaced them several times. That's just that. That's the law. And there is no excuse for them not to have replaced their beds. Yes, they broke them, but guess what? You still have to replace them because you're a parent. Children are expensive. They they are not inexpensive mm -hmm. at all. You know, I did see on her wish list, they put a toddler bunk bed, you know, up there. Someone did purchase it. That's great, but that's only for two of the four children that you have. Why didn't you put two bunk beds up there? Why haven't you looked into programs of replacing your children's beds if you cannot afford it? Now, she did bring up a couple of good points, and I did want to address some of them. For one, even though you are potentially close to meeting the standards that Portland sets out for housing children, that doesn't take into consideration that you are bringing in prolonged health risks into their lives by having the cat urine be all over the place, by having That's the lice disgusting. infestation and flea infestation, and by also having moldy laundry be in the house for long, long, long periods of time. What? What? <gasps> Why was she... her favorite jeggings that she's had since she was 17. So you're a hoarder on top of all this Disgusting. Second of all, it is amazing the fact that there are so many government programs, communal assistance, hell, even churches and schools like provide these different incentives and programs for people to take advantage of. She can go to like the Goodwill and get a bed frame or the Salvation Army and get some bedding for little to no money. But these people don't take any advantage of that. Why? Because I think that they think it is cool to film this type of situation mm, to put it on social media they in order to trick people present. into believing that they are in more help or more need than they actually are in. Yeah. And then they can get the sympathy and the pity that turns into views and, and turns into dollars. Yeah. And then third, but certainly not least, these kids do need their own bed. I can't stress this enough because there's a video out there running around of the dad saying, well, they broke their bed, so as a punishment, they have to go without beds. No, that's not how that works, especially when you have a bed. Kids do things. They damage things. They harm things. This is a basic necessity for them to live in the USA. And to act as if this is something that could potentially come up out of their pockets, and I'm talking about the parents, it's crazy weird. because like you stated earlier, Earlier, you can just go down to the Salvation Army and get you a damn bed. But what they're hoping for is that she'll make an Amazon wish list. People will provide her with the things that she wants and needs and desires, and everything will be taken <gasps> care of, and nobody really gives a shit. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the dad in this situation because he is just as much, if not even more, of a player in how bad the living conditions are than the mom is. I don't know his name. I don't know anything about him. I just know two things. He's a deadbeat who doesn't want to work, and the reason why he's a deadbeat is because it has been discovered that he has a whole nother child out there. Hi, I'm the first baby mama. Oh, I'm absolutely. T. <laughs> there's the fact that that's my sperm donor. I will not 
be posting my child on here. But my son is almost 12. Batman, that everybody's saying they have two loving parents, walked out of his son's life when he was two. Hasn't seen his son since he was five. And that's because I reached out to him to come to his kindergarten graduation. And at the time, he only had one child, which was a little black boy you guys see Not in his videos. Boys. That's my oldest's little brother. Now, my oldest doesn't even know he has two other siblings. So no, they didn't meet when he had one child. He probably has more. He hasn't paid child support, but he has a PS5. I feel bad for those kids. Because I never not wanted my son to not know his dad. And he's asked, and I've tried. Even his son asked, Mommy, I just want to know my dad. Why can't I see my dad? When that happened, I reached out to him. He read the message, never replied. So I had to put my son in counseling just because I knew it was bothering him. And there was nothing that I could say that was going to help him. I just told him, your dad made choices. And he chose to make those choices. It has nothing to do with you. I have the one other child, uh, Anthony. Um, I've been paying child support via garnishments ever since I can remember. And I worked out with W-2 since I was 18, 19. Worked night, multiple jobs, <laughs> never made above 22 an hour. Like jobs that works your body to the bone? Yeah, I worked retail, I worked overnight. Oh, shut I up. Home Depot, I worked at Jackson's, I worked at Grocery Outlet. I now, naturally, because the dad is getting defamed in this situation for having a secret child that he's not involved in, he had to respond, and his response doesn't necessarily help any situation. He's basically avoiding W-2 jobs. He keeps referring them to as W-2 jobs, which only the people that know why somebody would refer to them as W-2 jobs would know why he's referring to it as W-2 jobs is because he is avoiding his wages being garnished by the government for the child support that is owed. He comes up and admits that, but these people blow my mind because they are so baffled and some of the internet is baffled as to why they are receiving such harsh criticisms. And it's not because they're poor. It's because they are intentionally neglectful of their responsibilities because they feel as if this is going to make the best story and best entertainment for the internet. I think this is one of the more extreme examples of the situation at hand but to be honest with you the way that people use their kids as props for the internet public humiliation trying to get clout trying to get famous is actually disgusting <laughs> wait what my daughter cut her second period math class with two of her friends so you took her bed away <laughs> why went so fast I decide I can't catch it. <laughs> but he basically took her bed away. But there's more like having to wear this one outfit. What the fuck is this in English? For the next two days, including a shirt that says I skip math class. Oh, but there is more. Like having to wear he didn't even spell wear right. <laughs> uh this one outfit for the next two days. Okay. Yeah, that's terrible. Any of y'all have seen this viral video? But, you know, everybody parents different to each his own, right? Wrap this up. But in my opinion, I think what he and chose to do for his daughter's punishment was entirely too extreme. That is too much. Like, I think he yeah. could have just did the whole outfit thing and that been that. Bro, yeah. took all her stuff out of her room and everything <laughs> like that because she skipped a class. And by the looks of it, I know the whole world has skipped class before. I know it. So it's like, you have to give a punishment that matches the crime. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, parents nowadays do not be understanding that that is how you drive your child away. You have to break generational curses. Do not be that toxic parent that treats their kid like this and punishes their child in a certain way. That's how your kids don't come to you for nothing or don't want to be honest with you. And maybe this is some of these parents' way of relating to their kids more, but honestly, it comes oh. off as downright disgusting. Thing that has no place to be on the internet. Especially because they don't think of the long-term ramifications as to what happened when they had this internet documentation mm -hmm. of the events that happened in their home. What happened when the internet saw me grow up with lights for the past five or ten years of my life? What happens when the internet is calling me one bedroom cat piss boy? They don't think about those things that have happened. But we now have proof and evidence because the internet and some of these things have been around for so long of kids speaking up as to what happened when the cameras were off the small time that they were and what happens when they grew up in these situations. The first round of vlogger kids from the 2010s have grown up and are sharing their stories. Oh, Let's talk about one story. She said that the mom broadcasted her first menstrual cycle. The kid got into a car accident and instead of the mom coming
comforting the kid. Like, oh, baby, it's going to be all right. The mom put a camera in her face. The kid said it got so bad that when she was 12 years old, a man that was stalking her based off of her mom's mm. YouTube videos decided to message her on Facebook and follow her home at one point in time. The kid would hide in the bathroom to avoid being videotaped and photographed. The kid was also bullied at school because their intimate moments were posted on the mom's YouTube for their family vlog. The kid got a staph infection at one point in time, and the mom exaggerated the condition so bad that the math teacher who was watching the mom's videos told the kids to, quote, stay away from the infected girl. And that ain't it. The kid is saying this is a digital footprint that she did not create and is following her around for the rest of her life, and that is why she is fighting and seeking laws similar to the ones that govern child actors. Yes. One, for just compensation, and to protect them as well. This is why we keep saying y'all need to stop pimping y'all's kids out because they're going to grow up and go on CNN and talk shit about you. Put the hey. camera down. I'm not going to sugarcoat it as if content creation is I'm a very that. lucrative avenue. Now, granted, I'm not there, but there are content creators like Kai Sinat, I Show Speed, The Face Collective that make millions of dollars on a monthly basis based off of just showing their daily life. Casey Neistat is another one who went about vlogging his family for years and was able to become a millionaire based off of content creation. But the thing is, you have to show parts of your life and these people don't realize that you can show how much of a nasty person it is when you can or can't pimp out your kids based off of the ability to make content. If you're making your family decisions based upon the content, then that's where I think a lot of people are going wrong in these situations. We are not adopting from Thailand. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, well, we are still adopting. We're just not adopting from Thailand anymore. So... You want to explain why? So, um, here's the, here's the situation. Thailand has a its own law that's unique oh to it goodness. that um, after you, you are, them. you pick up your child and they're your child, you are not allowed to talk about them or share any images, photos, videos, anything about them online for a year. Nikki's got a YouTube channel and we share a whole lot. Wait, it's... hold on, hold on, hold on. When that hit, we literally were like, yeah. What? So you told me you couldn't put aside the content for a year. And I'm not even talking a about year. totally putting aside the content. I just mean there's one aspect of your life. You could not talk about that for one year and help somebody who is potentially in need because fame, clout, and wanted to be somebody that's bigger than what you are. That, that is so... That's ridiculous as fuck. I talk about on this channel, CJ So Cool allegedly going broke from his channel. He doesn't even post on the main channel anymore that has 9 million subscribers. But the really? reason why is because his content was so revolved around the kids that when the kids were no longer in the situation, nobody wanted to be around him. Nobody wanted to watch the videos anymore. He couldn't create content based off his own personality. CJ So Cool. That's crazy. I felt all bad because after him and Royalty had got into it or whatever um, about the kids, which was really his main source, his only income, literally. So if somebody takes the kids away from you, they automatically take over 75% of your income from you, which you are to make it. That's first of all. Second of all, if you turn around and then you start getting loans on money that's not there and you're not good with money management, you're going to automatically fall off. You know what I mean? That's the reason why I fell off real bad. But not just the loans oh, on I the channel based off his family's see. endeavors, but when the people remove the family from the aspect, you have nothing. 70% of your income is tied up in the family. It's just insane. But that is basically what the Brazilian Jenkins and any of these content creators are doing. And it's not just the income impacts that I'm trying to get across to people. It's the emotional and psychological damage that can be caused upon these kids that should be taken into consideration as to why you should not be doing this. Oftentimes, it damages relationships between the parent and the kid. And I can acknowledge when there have been good uh, situations where no parent and kid have made up because parent has acknowledged what happened in the kid's earlier life. He's still talking about these kids, Absolutely, though. baby. When my mom found out, she was not playing all that shit. She truly wasn't. And she made amends. My mom a completely did different content that was not tailored around her kids. She moved on. But a lot of these parents don't get to this point because they are blinded by the finances that they have for this short amount of time. But I think content creation is very liberating. I think that it can bring another income stream to your household. It can fulfill your wildest dream. However, I think that there's a give and a take, especially when you put your life out there like that. And these people that are willing to subject their kids to even a worse standards than they need to be to create content should honestly have CPS yeah, involved, involved immediately. Not only is it not fulfilling their wildest dreams, I guess a bunk better too is their wildest dreams, which is insane. But it's also damaging the kids in the long run run this is the worst family channel i've ever seen in my life yikes yeah that is insane it does seem like they're trying to appear as poor as possible for engagement and that's really disgusting and apparently they're breaking laws you know i don't know anything about kids laws but yeah apparently you gotta provide beds for everyone to, <laughs> you know at all times i mean that makes sense it's logical so yeah well we'll see how long they keep this up because it sounds like people are going to get cps involved soon as they should y'all let me know what y'all think though let me know what other videos you've been watching i'll see y'all the next one Bye.